Week number one of the regular season got us a really nice W, and we sim week number two against the Dolphins, and we caught a small loss by three points. But look, the Jets are one and one, and entering week number three against the Browns, this is a much better record than I thought we would have had. Now, as we get deeper into the season, a lot of you guys are want to make sure that I'm scouting the right players and getting ready to build this team in the proper way. But before we jump into that and I show you guys that, I need you guys to leave me comments down below and tell me which college players you want to make sure I have in this draft class for the 2019 year. Now, guys like Nick Bosa, Justin Herbert, top players like Shea Patterson and so forth, they'll be in there for sure. I won't have every player possible, but I need to know who the big name players are that you guys care about the most. I've been looking around the league a little bit to see what teams are basically needing a cornerback. And Buster Scrine is a guy that I've had in the trading block. And the Colts have that as their number two needs. We're going to try to trade Buster in a fourth rounder this season for the number one overall draft pick from the Colts. Let's see if we even get close. We're closer than I thought we were going to be. So to sweeten the pot, I'm going to throw in another fourth rounder, but this one is in 2020. Let's see if that actually gets us the pick. And we got the trade to go through, so we now are the proud owner of two first round draft picks in 2019. Now before you guys kill me, I had a backup plan. We traded Buster, but Bashad Breeland is available for us. Only 26 years of age, 76 overall, so a little bit lower, but he's got good man coverage and zone coverage. He'll be a fine guy to place in our roster. So we're gonna try to sign him, looks like to a one year deal here. And of course, the young fella is going to accept. It's no secret that this team is struggling at the tight end position, and I wanna try to get a little bit of a trickeration there. So we're gonna move Terrell Pryor from wide receiver to tight end. A couple of you guys suggested this in the comments down below. We're gonna change his number, move him to tight end, try him out there for a few games, and see what the veteran can do for us there. And lastly, before the game, we have a couple of contracts to negotiate. So I think Robbie Anderson, we for sure wanna keep here long term. He's only 25 years of age, so I wanna try to lock him in here. He's saying four years, $6.4 million, and a $3.36 million signing bonus. Should make him pretty happy. See if we can sign him. That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. And as for Jermaine Curse, we're going to try to shop him over the next few weeks. If we can't get him to basically bite in any deals, we'll try to sign him and trade him in the offseason. But for now, we'll let him waver around right here. We're heading to First Energy Stadium today to face the Cleveland Browns, who, crazy enough, this season got their first win since December of 2016. But look, this squad is ready to go. The Jets are retooling a few different pieces here and there. They're getting better. The offensive line is still trash. We're trying out Terrell Pryor at tight end today. We're going to see if he can block. We know he can catch. We know he can run. But can he block? And if he can become a dynamic piece of this offense, Sam Darnold might just throw more touchdowns and interceptions for the first time this season. Now we're going to kick off this first drive giving Joe Mixon a couple of touches because the young fella, he's going to be an integral part of our team obviously this season and if we want Sam Darnold to be successful, that run game has got to be good. After a short run there by Mixon, we're going to do a halfback screen here on second and seven. Looks like it's working pretty well. Mixon gets a couple of yards there, but he still doesn't get a ton and they drop him after two. So third down and a couple of yards here. Can we get the first down and keep this drive alive or are we going to be on the struggle bus today here in Cleveland? Darnold's going to drop back. He's got a guy across the middle. He throws it quickly, and Anderson is going to hold on to it for the first. Now, in the last play, our right tackle got abused, and Miles Gary got himself a sack. So we're going to be struggling a little bit with that pass protection. Got an opportunity here. We're going to throw in deep. Darnold's going to test his arm a little bit. He's got Robbie Anderson, and Robbie Anderson goes for the one-handed grab and can't haul it in. So third down and 17. A lot more difficult than the last third down that we ended up facing. Let's see what Darnold can do here. Now, Macklin in the slide going across the middle of the field. Pressure's there, he's gonna throw it, he's got him open. Macklin gets hit and he holds on to it, dropped at the 41. While Darnold has been shaky at some parts of the season so far, he's actually looking not like a rookie on this drive. I'm pretty happy with his performance. And we see Joe Mixon with his longest run of the day, getting about eight there. The Jets are gonna go back to the run here. Second and two, only need a couple. Mixing across the middle, is gonna run through a couple defenders and they gang tackle him down inside the red zone. See him one safety moving to the box now. Darnold's gonna try to recognize that. He's got a guy and that's nearly picked off. Second down for Sam Darnold. Some of the guys are going to drop back a little bit. He's going to try to flow one in. It's nearly picked off again. This drive was going really well, and all of a sudden, it's uh, a little dicey here on third down. So across middle, we're going to see Macklin. Macklin turns up the field. Macklin carries a couple of guys, and they say Jeremy Macklin is into the end zone. Look at Sam Darnold getting himself a touchdown pass before he throws the interception. We're all about that for the rookie. Now, the Browns have the ball. They don't really do anything, so they're forced to punt it away, and the Jets have the ball back with solid field position again. So here at the midfield section, Joe Mixon again trying to find a couple of yards. He's going to get about four to five. Second is short. Darnold again. 
all the time in the world feeling a little bit of pressure miles garrett nearly gets him and we're gonna see sam Darnold use his legs to get about seven or eight well we have a lot of things to kind of fill the holes on for this team the biggest thing is the offensive line i mean we get richie incognito who's been solid for us but on the edges on the right tackle spot left tackle spot there's a lot of work to be done second and eight Darnold in the center Got a receiver there, leads Macklin a little bit too much. That's going to make it third down and short. So third and inches, the Browns know we're going to probably try to run in here. We're going to see if we can stop their defensive line from getting into the backfield. Mixon makes a nice little run here. He's going to carry a defender and get, some, again, nothing crazy but four yards. First down now again, Darnold back here in the backfield. Got Terrell Pryor floating. We're going to lob one up, and Sam Darnold threw that win about 10 yards too far. I'll give Darnold props. He's playing much better than he has so far this season, but he's... Still making some rookie mistakes out here. Now second and ten, we're trying to finish this drive ball strong, getting a touchdown. Darnold's got a guy there. He throws it, and it's just swatted away at the last second by Jamie Collins. So third down and ten. We've been here before in a couple of drives. We've been lucky to actually convert these. So we'll put Quincy a new way in the slot. Terrell Pryor's actually out on this drive. Underneath round again. How many passes have been nearly picked off by Sam or, or for Sam Darnold? Too many at this point. So the Jets are going to line up for a field goal here. Should be an easy one. Nothing too crazy for Santos. He's going to kick it up. That one's going to hook a little bit. Comes back to the middle. And just like that, the Jets are up 10-0. So the Browns find themselves down just by double digits. And Tyrod wants to make sure he erases that deficit on the scoreboard. So good play action fake there by Tyrod. But a huge sack coming off the edge by Anderson. Big time players make big time plays. And that was a huge one. I don't want to jinx it. But this Jets defense is playing pretty well so far. So second and 18 after a big sack. This ball's going to throw out to the edge. We're going to try to light the receiver, and Jarvis Landry regrets going up for that pass. Third down and 18. Look, Coach Vini is proud of his team. Here week number three, things are going pretty well. So Tyron moves back in shotgun. Duke Johnson Jr. back there with him. We're going to go to Duke in the flat. Smart move, but Duke falls down, and that's going to make it a big fourth down. So Cleveland's going to be forced to punt it here on, from their 34. Back to our Darius Stewart. He's going to have a little bit of protection. So moving the sideline, one little juke move doesn't really get him many yards though. So the Jets take over from their own 27, again trying to put some more points on the board. If they score here, Cleveland uh, might be in a little bit of trouble. And we're going to float one up here. Terrell Pryor tries to make a play on it, but great defense overall, and that one swatted away. At this point of the game, we fell Cleveland to single digits in total yards, which is out of this world crazy. So third down to 10, we've been trying to get this run going on the drive, and it's not exactly working. But we go for the pass, and it's going to be knocked out. And we just got worried that Jeremy Macklin is injured right now. So that makes things a little bit dicey for us. We're going to see if we can see get an, an update on in his injury. But more than likely, he's going to be out for the entire game. Got a guy on the edge. We're going to throw one over set across the middle to Jermaine Curse, who hauls it in for the first. Darnold again. Solid drive going so far. You're going to see him move around a little bit. He's scrambling. He's got a guy across the middle. He throws it to Quincy Anuma, who's going to try to break the tackle, but they haul him down at the 44. Solid start so far for Darnold. Now we're going to move here into shotgun. About three minutes left here in the first half. You got Mixon in the backfield. He's had a solid game so far. Hasn't really broken off too many big runs, but he's got a decent chunk of yards at about 37 on the game. The big thing for Joe Mixon, though, is that you have to imagine if we ever get an offensive line in front of him, he'll be a 100-yard game rusher. But as of right now, we're seeing about 60 to 75, and can't blame him with the way our team's set up. Now, Robbie Anderson right off of his fingertips and is knocked away. Third down and eight. We're almost in field goal territory. I don't know if Santos can actually hit a field goal from here, so we're going to rely on someone to get some yards. Darnold in the backfield by himself. Steps up in the pocket. Guy across the middle here, Robbie Anderson. And Robbie Anderson gets dropped just outside of the red zone. Another big third down conversion by Darnold. Got to be impressed with how he's playing, though, so far. Got Darnold rolling out. He throws it, slings it to Jermaine Curse. Jermaine Curse picks it up. It's a low pass, and we're inside the five now. You have to give props or props to do. That was a heck of a throw under pressure there by the young rookie QB. Now mix it to his right. Lots of weapons here. We're going to put Pryor across the middle as well. So it literally slants for days of the moment. Got a guy possibly here. We throw it. That one is knocked loose, however. Second and goal. The Browns know a touchdown here is going to be really, really bad for their future in this ballgame. We're going to put Mixon in motion now on second and goal. Split him out to the edge. Watch it for a blitz here. Darnold's going to try to be patient. Not really much of a blitz. There's a little bit of pressure. You'll see him throw it back across, and it's almost picked off again. This is it. Third down and goal. Darnold has actually been good on third down and goal so far. Excuse me. Third downs in general. A third down of goal is a different kind of beast. 
The river blitz coming. We see Terrell Pryor and Terrell Pryor, his first catch as a tight end for this team. Always getting a little beef there with uh, one of the cornerbacks, but he gets a touchdown there. Playing his tight end, first game this season, Terrell Pryor's first catch is a touchdown. And just like that, Sam Darnold playing much better this week than we've seen in the first two. So with a minute left here in the first half, the Browns have the ball on the 45. It's third down at three. Can we get a stop here? This ball goes to David and Joku, and Joku's going to make a couple of moves. We end up hitting him, but the Browns call a timeout now on the 40. Ty right again makes a check down at the line of scrimmage. Sitting in shotgun again. Got an opportunity. He throws one, and it's batted away by the linebacker. Should have been a pick, though. We've seen a lot of negativity so far from this team, but the defense has stepped it up major so far in this ballgame. They're looking incredible. This ball's going to be thrown. Oh, my God. In between two receivers. That one hits Landry in the feet. So far, we've seen it. the Jets play much better on offense and on defense than they played all season. Or maybe the Browns just aren't playing like the Browns the last season. A little play action fake there. Tyrod again rolling around. Got to watch him to bring one back. We're trying blitz up on him. Oh, he throws one deep into the end zone, and that one is overthrown by about 50 yards. So from the 40, the Browns are going to line up for a field goal here. They're going to try to get some points in the board, which they failed to do all game long so far. So the kicker's waiting to go. We're trying to get in to block it. We're not even going to be close. This is hooking back to the left, and that one is going to not be good. So going into halftime, Hugh Jackson cannot be happy with his squad. We have a 17 to nothing lead. We just want to make sure we don't blow it here in the second half. So we're kicking off the second half with the ball, but it's on our own 16, which again, always a little spicy. Now we got Sam Darnold out here rolling around. He's got his halfback wide open. He overthrows him. What a rookie mistake there by the rookie QB. If Donald just throws a normal pass there, that one is completely wide open. And we're probably getting another 30 yards or so. But instead, he airmails it. Now, this time, at least he's going to hit Jermaine Curse. Jermaine Curse is going to try to hurdle the guy. And he may have just died on that play. To me, that was Sam Darnold making up for that horrible throw that he had to Joe Mixon. So let's see if we can get the running game going so Joe Mixon can actually eat out here. And the answer is no, apparently. While the Browns have given up a decent amount of passing yards, on the running game, they're actually being pretty consistent and not giving up much there. And no, no, Sam Darnold just got killed by the big fella, Miles Garrett, his second sack of the game. So third and 19. Got to imagine it's going to be pretty tough to get out of this one. We'll see Darnold throwing. Oh, he's got Terrell Pryor deep. Terrell Pryor is running. He's down to the 10, the 5. Terrell Pryor is tackled into the end zone. And his second touchdown of the ball game comes on a ridiculous third down pass that goes into the end zone. Say what you will about this Jets team, but Sam Darnold has actually looked pretty solid today. And again, he's making some rookie throws. He's missed some wide open ones. But I've been overly impressed with how he's played. Here in the 50 again, Brown's trying to drive. They need to put some points on the board because getting shut out is uh, not a good look for any. Anybody. Now Duke Johnson's out here running. We're going to try to sandwich him there a little bit. Jamal Adams with a hard hit and drops him at the 29. After a big gain of 22 on that pass, the Browns are again trying to drive inside field goal territory. A little handoff here to Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson's running. Oh, what a move by Duke, and he gets another first down on that play with a 12-yard run. I don't really know what play calls he was doing this game, but that was only the second run all game by Duke Johnson Jr. But the guy that talented, you've got to feed him way more than just twice a game. Now the pass here is nearly picked off by Jamal Adams, but he then goes for the big hit and stuffs that play. So second and ten again. Under center is Tyrod. Got Duke in the backfield. Tyrod's going to scramble. Those one across the middle. That one is going to be poked away at the last second by Avery Williamson. So it's third down. Coach Vini says, look, we got to go ahead and send the blitz here. We cannot let Tyrod get comfortable. He's a good quarterback, but we've kept him pretty uncomfortable with the blitzes and mixing up our coverage today. Now Williamson comes through. Tyrod's rolling around. Tyrod's in trouble. And Williamson is going to get the sack. A big one to drop him at the 28. And now the Browns are sitting at 4th and 21. Time for the field goal unit. So 4th and 21. Three minutes left here in the ball game. The kicker for the Browns is going to line up. Should be an easy chip shot, but we've seen some bad shots so far by the Browns. And that one nearly misses. Hooks back to the right, and the shutout is officially over. We've been killing it in the air, but we have to get the running game going, especially to milk this clock a little bit here against the Browns. And Joe Mixon, again, nothing crazy, but gets about three. It looks like Joe Mixon may have got banged up a little bit there. We're seeing McGuire come in the game, but no idea the extent of the injury for Joe Mixon. And look at McGuire. On one carry, he gets about half of what... Joe Mixon did in the first half. And we just got horrible news that Joe Mixon is now out of the game with a broken collarbone, which means that we won't see him for a long time. So we're going to have to adjust to that, see how we can do. Sam Darnold under pressure throws a dot in the field of Jermaine Curse. Jermaine Curse is going to fight his way out of bounds at the 21, and Darnold almost 300 passing yards today. Even though our running game has been absolutely abysmal, the passing game has actually looked good for Sam Darnold. No turnovers, three touchdowns, nearly 300 yards. I'm impressed by what he's done. And Thomas Rawls got impressed by that hit there from the safety. Good lord. 
as much as I thought we might have an offensive line issue, Thomas Rawls and McGuire have shown me that maybe it's actually a running back issue. Third down and three from the 14. We're in striking territory. Can we get in here to get a touchdown? However, so Darnold goes from under center. He's got a guy across the middle real quick and a new one. A new one's gonna get pushed back a little bit down at the five. First and goal now. We're gonna see McGuire coming to the game for Rawls, spelling him a little bit. Sam Darnold in shotgun, takes the handoff. Pushes that one up to McGuire, who gets flattened at the goal. Darnold is trying to get his fourth passing touchdown of the game. This would be remarkable by all stretch. And he throws one to Jermaine Kirsch, who's gonna get it to the end zone. He's hit late. Should have been a penalty in my opinion, but four passing touchdowns. Darnold has absolutely struggled with his accuracy all game long, but you gotta give the dude credit. Four touchdowns in one game for a rookie. Not a lot of players can actually do that. Now what a pass here to Josh Gordon by Tyrod, drop him at the 31. The Browns have just had a really strange game. Like Tyrod hasn't been horrible. They've only run the ball four times, but they just cannot capitalize when it comes to third downs, especially near the red zone. So Tyrod throws one and Johnson's gonna intercept it. Tremaine Johnson says, let me go ahead and snag that one real quick, young fella. He's gonna move down. They're gonna tackle him this time around the 46, but a huge interception by the corner. So the game is gonna be over. The Browns end up getting a garbage time touchdown, but it doesn't matter because Sam Darnold balled out today. So to recap our stats today, Sam Darnold took his QB rating and basically added 100 to it with 135.7 for the rating. He was 16 to 28 today, 300 plus yards, four touchdowns, and the biggest thing here for him, zero interceptions. On the rushing side of things, things were rough to be honest. Joe Mixon had 12 attempts for 45 yards, not a single touchdown. Thomas Rawls, seven of 18. Elijah McGuire, five of 16. So we still haven't found a way to get the running game going. Maybe we need to boost up that offensive line, but that might have to wait for the offseason. In the receiving game, Duke Johnson Jr. was going ham. Six catches, 46 yards. Jermaine Kearse, five catches, 108 yards and one touchdown. Jarvis Landry got into the end zone late there for the Browns. And Jeremy Macklin had a nice one. But Terrell Pryor, two catches, 66 yards and two touchdowns. Can't be mad at that at all. Defensively, we've had issues with Mo Claiborne, but he had 10 total tackles today. We also saw Tremaine Johnson get six tackles and an interception, and Jamal Adams, lots of hard hits, a couple of pass deflections, and four total tackles on the day. After the game, we have two guys we can upgrade, Deion Simon and Brandon Shell, but honestly, I don't think either guy is really worth upgrading at the moment, so we'll pass on that. So we finished week three being two and one, beating the Browns with an equal record of one and one to us before the game. We've got a lot of tough opponents coming up, but the way we're playing, if Sam Darnold keeps balling like he is, I think we'll be okay. But that running game, we've got to get it figured out soon.